This is our second video over polynomials, and in the first video, we tried to separate out what exactly is and what exactly isn't a polynomial. In this video, we're going to be breaking down polynomials individually and talking about all of the vocabulary words that go with them. So first, let's kind of review. Um, here are the formal definitions of what exactly is a polynomial, but more importantly, I want to go down here and I want us to focus on these examples here. Anything that follows this structure here of nice operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and positive exponents, those are polynomials. So I have identified it as a sentence of nice mathematical operations. And the reason that I use the word sentence is because um, we know that the sentence in the English language has a very official format. It starts one way, it ends one way, and everything in between, we expect it to follow a certain structure. The same thing goes with polynomials. So let's see how it's supposed to do that in the first place. Okay. So I have an example up here at the top, and I'll be referencing this a lot when we are looking through our vocabulary words. Hopefully that will clarify a lot of things for you. But I will also give you the, the definitions of each of these things at the same time. So back to referencing the sentence in the English language, we want it to be in a certain structure. Same thing in polynomials. The structure that we expect our polynomials to be in is descending order, and that's the first thing I have identified here. Now, by descending order, I mean by descending order of the exponents. So we want to write it with the highest exponent first and with the lowest exponent second. So I'm going to take this example here, and I'm going to rewrite it in descending order. So my highest exponent is the cube, so I'm going to put that guy first, but I need to keep it all as one unit that goes with it. So I have a negative 4x to the third. Then if I look at my next highest exponent, I see I have a 2, so everything that goes with it is next, a negative 3.1x squared. And by default, my last guy here is plus 6. So I've taken this polynomial example, and I've written it in descending order. And again, by descending order, we mean by the exponents, the largest exponent first and the least exponent at the end. Now, our first official vocabulary word here is degree. Every polynomial will have a degree associated with it. A degree is the highest exponent that is associated with that polynomial. So you can see why descending order is important because if it's in that order, our highest exponent will always be the first exponent. I've rewritten it in descending order, so I can pick out my highest exponent here, and that is my exponent of three. So that means in our example, our polynomial is degree three. Moving on to the next vocabulary word of terms. Terms are kind of the pieces of the polynomial separated by the plus signs. So first you might want to pick out how many terms each polynomial has, and then how are these terms kind of stuck together or whatnot. So if I look at my two examples here, it looks like I have a plus sign here, so that might make you think that this guy has two terms, one in the beginning and one in the end. Same thing with the polynomial when I rewrote it in descending order. I have a plus here, so I have one in the beginning and one in the end. But that's a little bit misleading. Now, even though the formal definition says by plus signs, we need to think back at how math can actually be manipulated. If we think back to subtraction, like a minus b, we can actually rewrite that as a plus a negative b. So even though our formal definition says plus signs, it's really by all the positive and all the negative signs. The reason that it says plus signs to begin with is because if it is a subtraction like this here, 
we need to keep the negative associated with that whole term in general. So going back to our example here, and I'm going to use the one that's in descending order because that's always the best format. I can see that I do have the plus sign that we originally picked out, but we also have this secondary plus sign here because we can insert that there and that not alter our polynomial any. So the terms in this polynomial are negative 4x to the third. That's one of our terms. The second one is negative 3.1x squared. And notice the negative goes with it. That's why it says separated by the plus sign. And then our last one is 6. So our terms are all these pieces separated by plus sign. Now I want to pause here for a minute and I want to go back to our formal definition of polynomials. If we look at it, it says a finite sum of terms. So and that's why I didn't really like this definition in the first place because it used vocabulary that we haven't even learned yet. Well now, hopefully, a finite sum of terms meaning we have a term plus a term plus a term, where each of these terms are in the form of a sub x to the n. So basically, this is just a condensed version or a condensed way of writing this long expanded version here. And hopefully, again, it all starts to fit together. Now it starts to make a little bit more sense about what exactly is a polynomial in the first place. Okay. Let's go back to our vocabulary words. Coefficients. The way coefficients are defined are the numbers in front of our variables, or the numbers associated with the terms in the first place. So if I look at my three terms that I've picked out in the last definition, the numbers associated with them are the numbers in front of them. So my coefficients are the ones highlighted in yellow. So those are negative 4, negative 3.1, and 6. So my coefficients are the numbers in front of all of those variables or the numbers associated with each identical term. So now that we've learned all of these vocabulary words individually, hopefully we can see how they fit together over here on leading coefficient and leading term. So if we have all these terms, which one of them is the leading term? Now, if it's in the correct order, if it's in descending order, of course it's going to be the one in front. But that's a little misleading because sometimes the homework tries to trick you and puts it in different order than what it actually should be. So you either need to rewrite it in descending order in first place, or you just need to pick out the term associated with the highest exponent. So, since we have rewritten ours in descending order, we can just pick out the leading term, the one that goes with it, and of course it is the one with the highest exponent. So in our example, our leading term is negative 4x to the third. Moving on to leading coefficient, if coefficients are the ones in front, if we want to pick out the leading coefficient, it's just the number in front of the leading term, or the number associated with the highest exponent. And again, if it's written in descending order, it's the very first one. If it's not, you find the highest exponent, and then you pick out the coefficient that's in front of that. So our leading coefficient is negative 4, just the coefficient that goes with our leading term. The last vocabulary word that we have here is constant term. And again, it's a term, so it's one of those individual pieces. Our constant term is the one without a variable attached to it. And just think about the wording of all of this. Variables means something's going to vary. So all of those letters, meaning each of those terms, are going to vary. Well, which term isn't going to vary or which term is going to remain constant? That is the one without a variable. 
So in our example, our constant term is 6 because it is the term that does not have any variable associated with it. So hopefully all of this vocabulary now starts to make sense. So let's see it in an official example. So in this example here, I expect you to be able to do all of these things. Write it in descending order, find the degree, the leading coefficient, and the constant of the polynomial. So at this time, I suggest you pause the video and see if you can do that in this example. Okay, so let's just hop to it. First thing is writing it in descending order. Well, that means we pick out our highest exponent first. So that is negative 1.4y to the eighth. Remember to keep everything with it, including the negative. Then our next is 6.7y to the sixth. And our lowest exponent is 0.9y squared. So descending order is by the exponent. In part B, we need to find the degree. Remember, degree is the highest power or the highest exponent associated with these. And since we've written it in descending order, it makes it really easy. It's the first one. So the degree of this particular polynomial is 8. In C, we need to find the leading coefficient. Well, if we pick out the leading term, again, it's the whole term that has the highest exponent with it. The leading coefficient is the coefficient or the number in front of that leading term. So our leading coefficient here is negative 1.4. And last part D is the term without a variable attached to it. It's the constant term. Now this one is almost a trick question because in this polynomial there aren't any constant terms. But that doesn't mean that we can't manipulate it to contain one. I can manipulate this polynomial by adding a zero to it, and that actually doesn't change my polynomial in any sort of way. So that means my constant term in this polynomial is zero. So if your polynomial doesn't include a constant term from the get-go, it will just be assumed that your constant term is zero. And we finished our example identifying a few of our vocabulary words. So that is where I'm going to stop this video.